Uh, this comes not only uh, from uh, information that comes out in statistics uh, that are pretty well established now, but also just my observations over the last 23 years that I've been working in the, in the Thurston County criminal justice system. Uh, these are my three major influences. One, you probably have already guessed, is the one I mentioned, substance abuse and addiction. Uh, and th there's really no good way to measure exactly what the impact of that, uh, of that is on the criminal justice system. Because while we see a lot of cases where drugs are directly involved, possession of drugs or dealing drugs, uh, that kind of thing, which accounts for, by the way, about a third of our felony caseload uh, in our felony division. Um, but uh, we have so many other cases where substance abuse and addiction are an influencing factor. For instance, if you consider DUIs, uh, dealing with folks who are alcohol addicted, um, a significant number of uh, cases, that, that number goes up significantly. If you look at cases where drug addiction is the motive uh, for an economic crime, like a shoplifting or a theft, uh, something like that, the number goes up uh, even more. So it's really very difficult to determine exactly what the influence is. But I'll tell you just my own anecdotal, anecdotal estimate, I'd say uh, at least three-fourths, if not more like 80 or 85 percent of our uh, crime that we have that comes through the office has some connection uh, to substance abuse or addiction in some way or another. Second major influence in the criminal justice system is uh, mental illness. Uh, and we have a significant uh, issue um, w with cases that come into the criminal justice system, which really, in the grand scheme of things, shouldn't be in the criminal justice system. But there's no other place at that point for those folks to be. And, we, and we're seeing that more and more now because the cuts in state government and the cuts in state services to the mentally ill uh, are having a significant impact on the criminal justice system because when the folks can't go into the mental health system uh, and they're out there um, acting out in some kind of criminal behavior, law enforcement has no choice and they end up in our county jail and they end up in our criminal justice system. Um, and we have, uh, and the, they're very difficult cases to deal with because they're not cases you can deal with with the traditional models of of crime and punishment, uh, you know, as they relate to kind of traditional incarceration and so forth. The third biggest factor, and this may surprise you, I don't know if it will, but I'm convinced that the third uh, biggest factor uh, influencing our criminal justice system right now are domestic violence and child abuse. Um, and I say that for a couple of reasons. One is, um, in this county, if we look back, I think it's three years now, uh, actually 2007, in this county we had uh, a, a, an unusual year in the, in the respect that we had eight homicides in this county. Now that's an unusually high number of homicides for this county as it is. All eight of those were domestic violence uh, homicides. Uh, two of them were murder-suicides, where the perpetrator uh, killed uh, his or her, her spouse or partner and then killed himself. Um, we recently had a homicide in the city of Lacey, unfortunately. Um, but up until that occurrence, uh, every murder in the city of Lacey since 2001 had been a domestic violence murder. So there's 10 years uh, that that city went uh, where it had no other motivated uh, murder other than domestic violence. I just returned from Washington, D.C. last week where I attended the, uh, the convention for the National Association of Drug Court Professionals, uh, really a great conference. But uh, what I found out there was that uh, some of the new information now uh, and the new research is really starting to reveal the impact of child abuse as it relates to later um, uh, criminal behavior in life, <clears throat> and not just criminal behavior, but also addiction and substance abuse. There's been a study going on for a number of years called the ACES study. I don't know, has anybody ever heard of the ACES study? It's an acronym, A-C-E. It's the uh, Adverse Childhood Experiences Study. And what they did is they created a checklist of nine adverse uh, childhood experience factors. Uh, and 
they began surveying thousands and thousands of people to, to look at how many of these adverse childhood experiences they'd had in their life, and then looking later in the outcomes uh, of those. What, what happened to this person as they proceeded through uh, their lifetime? Uh, now, these nine factors included a variety of different uh, uh, issues or factors, uh, including whether the child was physically uh, or sexually abused or emotionally abused, but also included uh, issues uh, such as if uh, one or both parents were themselves substance abusers or addicted, whether one or both parents were uh, mentally ill or institutionalized for mental illness, uh, whether there was domestic violence in the household, and specifically actually whether the mother um, uh, in the family was battered uh, or physically assaulted, uh, and a few other factors. There's nine in total, and each one of these factors gave the person a point, uh, and that gave you a score of zero to nine. And then looking at how that correlated to later in life, what they found was that people who had four or more factors uh, ACE factors had a substantial increase for things like substance abuse and addiction, surprisingly, not surprisingly, really, mental illness, <clears throat> heart disease, um, uh, all kinds of health-related events, criminal behavior, incarceration, uh, all of these different factors they looked at all substantially increased as the ACEs score uh, increased. So what we learned from that, and what I'm convinced, is all of three, these three major influences that I've identified, substance abuse and addiction, mental illness, family violence and child abuse, are all interrelated. They're all interconnected. And so when we look at, at, the, at trying to take a strategic focus uh, on crime reduction and crime prevention and public safety, makes sense to me that we focus on these three factors, really emphasize a prevention effort in, in those three factors. I want to talk about some of the programs that are going on right now um, that are directly um, responding to those uh, factors. The first one now you've been hearing about for many years, and that's the Thurston County Drug Court. Um, and how many of, uh, everybody's I'm sure has heard of the Drug Court. Has anybody ever visited the Drug Court? Yeah, there's a few hands in here. Um, I want to tell you a little bit, I think, about just kind of the, the difference between a drug court and, the, and a regular court. Because, in my opinion, the drug court, the problem-solving court model, uh, which w began with the drug court, is one of the pro most profound changes in the criminal justice system since the jury trial, really. I mean, it's that big of a, of a difference. The drug court... Uh, the drug court movement, if you will, actually started in uh, Florida, Day County, Florida, I think, when uh, uh, Janet Reno was the prosecutor uh, there before she became uh, the attorney general. And the idea of the drug court was this. You know, our court system was uh, designed to, to um, deal with <clears throat> controversy and conflict in fact. It was to resolve disputes, and mainly to resolve disputes around fact. So one party would have one version of facts, one party would have another version of facts, each would have evidence that supported their version, and they'd go head to head in an adversarial system where each presented their evidence, they tested the evidence of the other side, and from that adversarial system, theoretically, the truth would come out, or at least a jury would make determinations about what actually happened, what the facts of the case are. So that's the traditional uh, justice system and the traditional criminal justice system. The state as the prosecution, the defendant uh, acting as the defense, and that adversarial system. Well, that's a very um, expensive and slow system uh, to resolve cases when in the grand scheme of things. It takes a lot of time to go through a case and, and do that presentation of evidence and attack the other evidence and so forth. And so many of our cases come in where there's really not a dispute about the facts. Uh, in drug cases, we're particularly um, uh, an example of that because uh, the, the routine drug case would be somebody would get stopped for a traffic violation, 
There'd be a warrant out for their arrest or something. They'd get arrested, they'd get searched. There'd be drugs on their person or in their car or something like that. Facts really not in dispute. 